a friend of mine, Kalyan, suggested Bandish Bandits. Thank you, Kalyan. But for you, I would have missed a wonderful experience on television. Television serials after Buniyad and maybe 102 always reminds you somewhere of an Ekta Kapoor kind, reminds you of those gaudy heroines and vamps and scheming people, those eternal stories of mothers-in-law, daughters-in-law, no happy family, nothing, moving away and moving away distinctly from all this. We have a wonderful series given to us by Anand Tiwari. Thank you, Anand Tiwari, for at least getting out of that slot and telling people that serials, after all, are worth watching. That, I think, is the first important statement the serial makes. Namely, that a serial can be watched without your sensitivities being hurt. I'm going to roughly divide this uh, take of mine on the film at two levels. One is the performances, and the other is the music. These are the main stay of the serial. It's a nine, it's a nine episode serial. I think all of them roughly about 30 to 40 minutes. And all important is that each episode of the serial moves to the next level of the story and does not stagnate like you would in a regular serial where for weeks on end you don't miss something and you come back and you can join the thread because nothing has moved. Thanks again to Tiwari for doing that for us. Probably because it's a nine part series, the serial moves systematically and happily. It's a story about a musical genius played in a way only he can in Hindi cinema. His screen name is Pandit Radhe Mohan Rathor. He builds the Rathor Gharana of Hindustani music, played, as I said, by Nasir Uddin Shah. His family, he has two sons, Rajendra and Devendra. Rajendra, his elder son, is Rajesh Talan. His younger son is Amit Mistri. His son is married to Mohini, Shiba Chadda. And he has a grandson, Radhe, played by Ritwik Baumik, who is the lead actor of, or part of the lead pair in the serial. Uh, the leading actress or the leading pair actress in the series is a girl called Tamanna uh, that is played by Shreya Chaudhary. The story moves first with the family of Radhe Mohan Rathor. He is shown as a very stern, strict, seen better days musician who runs his gharana of music. At home, he has a few students, very few. And it is very important to be declared the heir apparent of the gharana. And trying hard to be the heir apparent of the gharana is Radhe. You must know in contrast that Pandit Radhe Mohan's sons, both Rajendra and Devendra, have failed the test. And therefore, one generation of musicians have not been given the title, which the grandson aspires, and somewhere the grandfather thinks that he's good enough and he pushes him into the test. A good part of the serial is about how he trains the grandson and how it is not easy to get to that status where a bandhan is tied, a convocation 
function as hell. Twice, it, he seems to have uh, a problem with it. Once he arrives late, therefore it's canceled by the grandfather, who's temperamental in addition to being extremely talented. I'm not going to spell out the details of the serial because I sincerely hope everybody who's listening to this takes the trouble of watching this wonderful television serial. On the one hand, as I said, is the traditional family Hindustani music. In fact, the film begins with a lovely rag bhairav. I'll come to that later. And the hero, Radhe, happens to meet Tamanna, a girl from the city, more contemporary, so she used this, the F word every time she can. Her friends seem to be using the word a lot many times. So does her colleague, Argya, played by Kunal Roy Kapoor. They obviously are part of a music company, and they're trying to find a voice that will be a jackpot. And uh, Tamanna is in search, and time is running short, and she's not finding the right guy, till, of course, she runs into Radhe. Somewhere around the fourth or the fifth episode enters Digvijay Singh, who claims the Bikaner Gharana. In contrast to what he says, that Radhe Shyam is a part of the Rathod Gharana. There is a conflict between Radhe Mohan and Digvijay on who owns the Gharana and who will be its title owner. Also is a royal family that supports the Gharana headed by Radhe Mohan. There is a small side story of how their granddaughter is sought to be given in marriage to Radhe. Radhe, as I told you, is already seeing uh, Tamanna. So there's that side story, but it doesn't really move away from the story. If there's anything wrong in the script, it's probably the very artificial love story that is superimposed about Tamanna and Radhe. I would have loved if the director had said, I'll move completely away from the typical paradigm and tell you a story about a man, a girl who could have been his inspiration, but need not necessarily have been a romantic angle to the story. As they move on, at one level of the story, there's a very interesting conflict between Tamanna and her mother on the one hand, and on the other, a great support system functioning between Radhe and his mother, Mohini. All this heads to a climax as to who will become the best singer and who will become the inheritor of the title. Not too many will have to sit and guess as to who will, but the road to that positive end is an amazingly nice experience. The first three and the last two of the nine episodes, so five on nine, are must-sees. They are extremely well-crafted, well-presented, and there is a certain sense of focus on what the film maker actually wants you to see. There's not too much of drift from the basic core of music being the theme. The, on yet another layer is the story about how music, after all, is universal. As the narrative goes, you would realize that Radhe has to go and make money through popular music. How he manages to do that, even as he trains under the strict vigil of his guru, parts a good part of the narrative, as a consequence of which you get to listen to some amazing music. And when I talk about music, time to talk about some of the great things you see. Lab Parai in Rag Mia Ki Malhar. There is Garaj Garaj Mia Malhar. There is Kapil Gold's Rag Dhup. Sajan Bin. Jhun Puri, Masti Apa, I think Jhun Puri again, Virah in Marwa, 
पधारो मेरे देश इन मांड धारा यू होगी एंड देन केसरिया पालमा व्हाट अ प्रेजेंटेशन अमेजिंग सॉन्ग्स शंकर एहसान लॉय विल हैव नेवर बीन सो ग्रेट दे हैव आउटक्लास्ड देयर स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड हैव ट्रांसलेटेड some amazing hindustani music into acceptable music for the layman people in south india can relate to this whole concept because of k vishwanath's shankara bharanam nasiruddin shah very similar uh, character like the one somaya jhulu played in shankara bharanam having said that nasir plays a role and interprets it completely differently there is no trace of somaya jhulu of shankara bharanam in nasiruddin shah in bandish bande bandit now this is what brilliance is about this is what honest acting is about i suspect the music is not to be well placed they flow with the narrative in fact they are a part of the narrative in fact they are the narrative and if for nothing just close your eyes sit for 40 minutes right in front of the television and listen to some amazing music that you have not heard in very very many years i will complete my musical tour of the film with one sentence that may sound a tad controversial but to be honest to myself every time a musical note came through the serial i was hoping there was a shankar jaykishan or a panchamda and i was just imagining what they would have done to a script of this kind this is not to take away the hard work the industry the sincerity and the honesty in the product that shankar ehsan loy give us it is an album worth listening worth owning worth repeating worth revisiting of the cast extremely disappointed with the cast director whoever he is i think he's mucked it up royally in choosing shreya choudhury and ritwik bhaume to play the lead play very artificial they don't have the kind of uh, passion that brings about the story and their problem is that they are in the midst of some amazing talented character actors and the comparison worsens their performances because you have to all compare and not only do they fail in comparison by themselves i don't think they have the wherewithal to carry out those two wonderful characters which are once in a lifetime roles that both of them let go a begging among the performers nasiruddin shah brilliant as ever not a moment does he lose out on there are some moments especially one in the second episode then he sees his uh, grandson do one line of a song and he understands the nuance of that talent and he expresses it sometimes what expression this actor has sometimes i think there are moments when he looks a little repetitive but then after all human character i i'm sure when you watch uh, a lot of things i say yeah very many times words may be repetitive my style may be repetitive my use, usage of words may be so i don't fault him for it there is in radhe mohan rathor radhe mohan rathor and that is what nasiruddin shah contributes in a brilliant way to bandish bandits atul kulkarni what an actor he has amazing screen presence but somewhere i suspect either he didn't read the script carefully or he was more than enthusiastic to be a part of the team or the editor failed him he's done extremely well but a little below what i expect of an actor like atul kulkarni this is not to say it's a bad performance atul kulkarni's presence 
in the cereal adds a magnetic effect to the entire cereal. All other actors from Amit Mistri as Devendra, Rahul Kumar as Kabir, Ritu Raj Singh as uh, Harshwardhan, the girl Tamanna's dad, Shashi Kiran as the Munshi, and uh, uh, Ritu Raj Singh as Harshwardhan, the father, Trida Chaudhary coming in as the girl who could be marrying the hero, very good, very steady performances by each one of them. I have left three, two names for special mention. As the elder son who's failed his father, not because of his lack of talent, but because of the high standards and expectations of Pandit Radhe Mohan, Rajesh Tailang is a winner performance. Amazing. The defeat, the commitment, the love, the frustration, all mixed into a lovely cocktail performance. Rajendra, Rajesh Tailam is of compelling viewing and is one of the takeaways from a large picture from which there are many takeaways. But one of the best I thought was the performance of Rajesh Tailam. I said elsewhere, the script may have done him a bit of injustice. It may have moved away from him a time or twice. But as long as he's before the camera, the camera doesn't miss him and he doesn't miss communicating the brilliance that is in him. I really, really hope to see a lot more of Rajesh Tailang. What a performance. Sheba Chadha. We've seen her do many roles. We saw her as late as in Tappar. Some of these actors in our cinema are crying for opportunity. Her performance in the film is as good as Anita Kamar's performance in Bunyad. Remember, in Bunyad, she had such a long spell to convince you that she was a brilliant actress. What happened with her with Bollywood may be a different story. But woman empowerment, not shouty, but steady, strong. She is the punch in series. I strongly recommend the series to everybody, both for some brilliant performances and for the music. But most importantly, hats off to the director for being focused, for being not tempted by cliches and trying his very best. Watch it.